Welcome back. Markets coming back almost as quickly as they fell in the wake of the British vote to leave the European Union. The volatility may leave some investors with whiplash for sure, but one beneficiary of the wild moves, the exchanges. Joining me right now is the president of the New York Stock Exchange, Tom Farley. Tom, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me back. What a week. What was it like steering the ship while, you know, you were expecting a huge decline and we got it 600 points after the uh, British vote? Well, a week ago today, as, as you know, I was preparing to come on your show right. the next day, Friday <laughs> morning. And uh, it's another one of my brilliant predictions. While, while, while we both plan, we plan for both the uh, leave eventuality and the referendum vote, as well as the remain, my personal prediction was, well, it's going, going to be remain, I'll go on Maria's show. Of course, that, that didn't happen. That next morning was, it was intense, and, and you remember it from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Absolutely. I mean, walking in that morning, there was a lot of, you could just sense it, a lot of anxiety and angst. And to some extent, the world does look to the New York Stock Exchange, particularly in a, a volatile moment like that. But then the open was very, very smooth and orderly, certainly on the New York Stock Exchange, but really among, among all exchanges. And the opens on the New York Stock Exchange were particularly smooth, half as volatile as other exchanges. And so everyone was able to take a kind of take a deep breath around about 10 a.m. last Friday and say, okay, we're going to be okay. It's a busy day. Brexit obviously has made the world a little bit more volatile. It was also the Russell rebalance day, That's right. which is a That's very, right. very big volume day. But we made it through and uh, uh, really as, as an industry and it, and it worked well. What are you seeing in terms of the sentiment right now in terms of investors? I mean, you know, that 600 point sell off got everybody thinking, okay, are we on the risk of a recession? You know, are we going to see a global recession? And does that translate into nervousness in terms of investors? Well, well if, you, if you just look at the markets, the markets have, have recovered to a great extent. Um, and, and in fact, some indices are all the way back to where they were pre Brexit. In addition, volatility has subsided dramatically this week. So those are both very good things. Good. They also augur well for the uh, IPO market. I think if I can just kind of give you my personal view, I'm an optimist generally. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it, European Union growth has been anemic for the last decade. And my hope, while I didn't expect this, nor was I rooting for, for a leave vote, but my hope is everyone goes about the negotiation in a very mature way, and perhaps we're better off. And we look back five years from now and we say, hey, we, we found a way to get through this with, with greater GDP growth, higher quality of life around the world. So in terms of volume, I know Friday saw the most trading volume in a single session in nearly five years. You also had, you know, amid all the vol volatility, a bright spot. You had the IPO of Twilio. Stock has more than doubled since its IPO last week. Tell us what you're expecting in terms of business at the NYC, in terms of IPOs, in terms of actual deals rest of the year. Yeah, IPOs, uh, as you know, are inversely correlated to the volatility in the market. And if you go back to last August, the markets got very volatile. And then the volatility subsided and it looked like, okay, that IPO machine is going to creak back to life. And then in January and February, we had a whole nother bout of volatility. Then we got to May and it looked like, okay, now this is the time. In fact, we had a day in May where we had four IPOs in a single day, including U.S. Foods, billion dollar IPO. And it felt like, okay, now it's coming back. And, and then we had the Brexit vote. And so we keep having these bouts of, of, of volatility. Certainly Twilio was a good sign. Mm. And certainly we have a very large pipeline of IPOs, companies that have wanted to go public for the last year that have not. There are five or so that are hoping to go public in July, large, exciting IPOs. So if that happens, I'll feel I'll fair, feel very good about the end of the year, but it remains to be seen. If we mm -hmm. have another spike in volatility, another bout of volatility, investors don't like to invest in IPOs during a very turbulent time. Sure, and companies don't necessarily want to go public when the markets are not going to be, you know, kind to them. Exactly. If you will. Where are you seeing the business come from when you look at the globe? Are you still seeing the, the, the number of deals happening from like China and, you know, other busy areas around the world? What are you expecting in, in that regard? You know, well, one of the one of the silver linings, I hesitate to use that term because I know a lot, of, a lot of areas around the world are, are struggling right now, but a silver lining, at least from the perspective of the NYC, is when other areas of the world are having a tough time or there's a lot of uncertainty, the U.S. and the New York Stock Exchange are safe havens. So we do get more global IPOs. In fact, uh, there's a company called Line, which is a Japanese messaging app. Mm. Essentially, the best way to describe it is if you're 30 years or under in, in Japan, you use Line and that's how you communicate with all your friends. Is that right? It's, it's a really interesting company and they have said, uh, they have issued a press release actually saying they are going to be going public on the New York Stock Exchange, what is expected to be a very large IPO on July 14th. So that's a case in point of a, of a really good global company 
choosing to come list with us. So when you look at the core business, I mean, I guess after the company's earnings, you know, uh, it, it was made clear that there's a focus on, on the core business, not necessarily more M&A cross-border deals. Uh, one thing that I know has been talked about is all the growing data services. Now 41 percent of revenue at the New York Stock Exchange. What's the strategy there in terms of data services? Um, is that going to be a growing area of business at the New York Stock Exchange? Yeah, there's two things going on. One, the amount of data in the world is growing exponentially, continues to grow exponentially, and has for a decade. You keep hearing about big data. Well, customers need firms to help make, you know, service providers to help make sense of all that data. So you've got all that data at the NYC. We have the data, yeah. and so we're finding new and valuable ways to deliver data to customers in a form they can digest it and they can make more informed decisions. The other thing going on is exchanges historically, you know, think of it, you walk into a McDonald's and historically exchanges just sold you the Happy Meal. Over time, exchanges are now unbundling and they're, and they're selling you individually the hamburger and, and, and the french fries and the soda. So now exchanges are charging for market data, they're charging for uh, the actual trading and they're doing it in a very transparent way that customers can make an informed choice about what's a valuable service and what isn't a valuable service. And we're finding that customers are really going for the, the market data offerings. That's terrific. So that's a whole other area of revenue and potential growth at the New York Stock Exchange that you've been uh, taking advantage of. Yes, and the way to keep it going is for us to continue to innovate and, and provide new valuable forms of data for the customers. Tom, good to see you. It's good to see you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Tom Farley is the president of the NYSC. Coming up after already backing a candidate under FBI investigation, now President Obama plans to hit the campaign trail. What voters can expect as he enters the push for another Clinton White House. Plus, have they finally found a buyer for its internet properties? We'll take you to Yahoo headquarters as Marissa Meyer prepares to address shareholders. We'll be right back.